Hey, this is Jeff Bosbasil, the 10 minute treasurer with practical advice for improving your church's financial future. So in this video, I want to talk about how do you close a month or a year in QuickBooks Online? And it's probably similar in regular QuickBooks, but I have QuickBooks Online, so that's why I'm showing it this way. Um, because a lot of times you issue reports and then you'll get a late transaction or you'll void a, a transaction for whatever reason and then all of a sudden the reports that you issued um, th they're not going to match up with what you're going to issue in the future so it just looks confusing for those people reading the reports you got to go through a little bit more explanation it's a lot easier to just have that activity recorded in the current month but anyway this is how you protect your system uh, you protect your accounting system from messing with a closed month. So I'm using QuickBooks Online. So here's the foundation one. And what I want to do is I want to show you what it looks like first before I show you how to do it. I want to show you what it looks like. Um, so if you go ahead and go in, uh, let's just enter a bill. And so uh, click on bill. And I'm just going to issue one to JCT Accounting. And I closed the, the month, or I closed the books as of March 31st. So I'm going to have the bill date as of March 15th. That's the actual posting date. So that's the date it would show up in the general ledger as an expense and a liability. And then I'll go ahead and hit save and close. And then you get this warning here. Um, and I put a password on it. Uh, mainly the reason I put a password on it is because sometimes it's so easy to see a pop-up warning and just hit OK and kind of ignore it. But this makes me actually have to think, OK, do I really want to change a closed period? Here, just so you can see it. Um, but it, it's that extra warning, that extra um, if you don't have a password in there, it just doesn't give you that password field. Probably the more common issue than um, receiving a bill late, uh, like that, well, that one I showed, would be uh, having to void a check. After you get done with your bank reconciliation, maybe there's some checks standing out there that, and you've contacted whoever you wrote the check to and they need it reissued. Or maybe you just need to wipe it out altogether, but a lot of times you're just reissuing the check. So what does that look like? So I looked through my um, bank rec and I had one older check sitting out there. Again, I'm closed as of March 31st. And then I had this check to the Garden City Cemetery Association dated January 14th that I was waiting on. And there's the check number 9083 and there's the amount 4,121.02. And so I'm gonna avoid it. And again, you get the message for beware avoiding it but then there's also the message of the transaction date where you have to do your password in there and so i'm not going to void this check um, i don't void the check uh, that's going to be the key so instead what i want to do is i want to issue another check in the new year or the open period so i'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that so new check um, and then I'll put in the Garden City uh, Cemetery Association and the date is today's date as of when I was doing that and then I want to use the checking account for my category and I also want to in the description I'm gonna write reissued check number 9083 and if you recall, the amount was $4,121.02. So I'm going to add that in there. And then I'm going to be able to um, save and close this. And what this will do is it'll add a debit and a credit for in my checking account. And so when I do my next bank rec, I can take the debit side of this transaction and match it up against the credit side of the um, old transaction from January. And then the one that's hanging out here is gonna be after I print this check. So I'll print the check, it'll be a new check number and that'll be hanging out, but it won't be 
Um, it won't be that old one from January anymore, so I'll be waiting for the new one to clear instead. So that's how you would do that. Um, it, but again, you get the warning, which is the key thing, the warning that says, hey, you're going to change something. Do you really want to do that? Enter your password. So now how do you actually close that period? That's the question. So you go up to your gear and go ahead and click on that and you want to go to account and settings and then from, from there you want to go to advanced and after advanced right near the top it's the fourth one down in my mind there's closed books and I unclicked it but uh, so you want to click the check mark and then every time you close a month you're gonna have to change this date so next month I'm gonna have to change that to April 30th and I like it with the password in there but you can just have it have a warning uh, but I like it with the password in there and it's saving my old password that I had uh, plugged in earlier so I'm just gonna hit save and then I'm gonna hit done and that's how you do it I mean it, it is pretty quick but you do have to remember that's part of your closing procedure so when I issue my reports I'm gonna want to go ahead and update that date every time I wish there was an easier way to do that or a quicker way or more intuitive way uh, but there's not so all right that helped you. Uh, again, this is uh, Ministry of the Finance Office of the Dakotas Conference and the Dakotas United Methodist Foundation. And you can find us at www.dakotasumc.org or dakotasumf.org. And um, I, I just want to encourage you too, if you found this helpful, be uh, I would ask that you like, subscribe, share, whatever it is. And you can also find more of our stuff at um, jctaccounting.com. That's where I just put together a quick blog site and it might be useful to search that for other topics related to this. So, all right. I just, God bless you guys and until next time.